صوت الباب في سوريا I left Syria shortly before I was five years old, and um, we moved to Saudi Arabia, and from, from there we moved to the U.S. in, in uh, 1991. <laughs> That I will bear two faith and allegiance. That I will bear two faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the governments. And to the governments established in the United States. Established in the United States. In this state. In this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly perform all duties of the office of mayor. Perform all the duties of the office of mayor. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. So help me God. Uh, attacking uh, the Assad regime, um, uh, at the minimum, attacking military installations as as planned. Khan al Assad, which is one of the areas that was attacked uh, with chemical weapons in Aleppo, and people have testified to the symptoms of these chemical attacks that I spoke to. Um, there's no doubt, and as as the White House has confirmed today, that no one has the ability to deliver such chemical weapons and chemical attacks except the, the Syrian regime. Welcome to the program. The UN says there is evidence that chemical weapons have been used in Syria, but it suspects rebel forces are responsible, not the government. The UN's investigator, Carla Del Ponte, says interviews with victims and doctors in countries neighboring Syria suggest the use of the nerve gas sarin, which causes asphyxia. It's classified as a weapon of mass destruction, and it's banned under international law. Let's hear what Carla Del Ponte was saying. During our investigation for crimes against humanity and war crimes, uh, we collect some witness testimony that uh, that made to appear that uh, some uh, chemical weapons were used, in particular nerving gas. And what was, uh, what appeared on, um, um, to our investigation that uh, that was uh, used by the opponents, by the rebels. And we have no, no indication at all that the government, Syria, uh, the authority of the Syria government have used chemical weapons. But the ultimate goal is for us have to go. Mayor. I've been told for 12 years Al Qaeda is my enemy, sir. Why is my money going to Al Qaeda in Syria? I'm not some fool standing here in front of you, sir. And I know that our money and weaponry, and by the way, have friends and family in the Jordanian army, and I know what our troops are doing there. And any man who supports Al Qaeda, I don't care if he's the president of the United States or the senator from the great state of Arizona. McCain defended our government's actions in Syria, insisting the U.S. is not arming members of Al Qaeda. Now, I, I want to send a message loud and clear to Senators McCain, Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, and Joe Lieberman. Uh, could you tell them very emphatically whether you support their efforts, their leadership efforts, uh, in terms of their action, they want to take what they want to take to help the Syrian people. I, I, I absolutely do. In terms of what what the Syrian people are, in Syria are saying. كل ما يسمى بالجيش الكرد مثل الدبين بزعج ونهايته قتل وتحت اسحاق الجيش العربي السوري وباذن الله بدنا نخلص منهم 
باذن الله مثل ما كلنا شايفين بعضنا وسوريا ترجع امينه طول ما في مواطنين شريفين وطول ما في انسان شريف وطول ما في كل انسان وطني بحب بلده جيش الحرب حرامي بدنا جيش النظامي جيش الحرب حرامي بدنا جيش ان شاء الله بيوتهم كلياتهم خلوا بيوت العالم شردونا وان شاء الله هيك نشوف باهاليتهم هيك واولادهم هيك ليش طالعين اليوم ليش طالعين طالعين هون اليوم مشان ناجي الجيش العربي السوري الله يحمي لنا اياه ويخلي لنا اياه ويطرد الجيش ينظف الحلب كله وسوريا كلها تنظف ينظف من رزقهم النجس هذا كلياته نحن في حلب عانينا الامرين وحلب تستاهل الحسم وتستاهل كل الدعم يا شادي الارض لنا الارض لنا عرسناها بضافرنا رويناها بدم الشهداء فصارت تشبه الحنه الارض لنا غصب العين كل الدنيا الارض لنا نحن الارض لنا اي بلدنا ارواحنا فداها دمنا فداها اولادنا فداها نحن بدنا نضل صامتين نحن سوريين نحن بدنا نضل صامتين انا بس شوف عسكري مرق الطريق بس شوف طفل مرق الطريق بحضنه شوف عسكري بوس بسمنا معناه والضفع على صدري كانه ابني انا شو بدي ما حرام علي هناك يا منو ما حرام now in the past two weeks there was the first democratic election in Syria since the Assad family took, took over and now there's a council for the entire province of Aleppo and the city council dissolved. This is something you don't see in Syria. À Alep, face au chaos, malgré l'hostilité des autres rebelles, ces islamistes profitent de l'absence de toute autorité pour tenter d'imposer leurs lois. Ils se présentent comme ultime recours. C'est le cas de cet homme en noir, Abu Suleiman. Il appartient à la branche syrienne d'Al-Qaïda, le groupe Jabhat al-Nusra, qui combat aux côtés des rebelles. La branche syrienne d'Al-Qaïda a déjà mis en place quatre tribunaux islamiques dans la ville d'Alep, comme celui-ci, installé dans un ancien lycée. Gardé de jour comme de nuit par des hommes en armes, le tribunal a des allures de camp retranchés. C'est le cœur du nouveau pouvoir islamiste. Originaire du nord de la Syrie, il est arrivé à Alep il y a un an. De lui, on ne sait rien de plus. Sinon qu'il a pour mission de mettre en place, dans la ville, les bases d'une société islamique. Le monde doit savoir. Les tribunaux islamiques d'Alep et du nord de la Syrie constitueront le cœur de l'État islamique, qui, grâce à Dieu, verra le jour une fois la guerre finie. Ici, pas de code pénal. C'est la charia, la loi coranique qui est appliquée. Les verdicts sont rendus par Mohamed Almaz, ici en blanc, un imam reconnu de la ville d'Alep. Lui aussi est membre de la branche syrienne d'Al-Qaïda. Il a été promu juge en chef du tribunal par Abu Suleiman. Les détenus n'ont pas droit à un avocat. Et toutes les méthodes, même les plus brutales, sont bonnes pour obtenir des aveux. And, and people are moving toward a more democratic and civil society.
Syria on relief mission since the revolution broke out two years ago with a fourth trip planned soon. his life in a story you'll see only on 12. It was crazy because you feel there, there, there might be a few blocks away from you, but you can't. Mohammed Harula was so close to seeing his family in Aleppo, Syria, but knew he couldn't. These are people I grew up with. You can't see them. fighters were systematically killing adult men and trying to keep women and children alive to hold them as hostages. According to opposition sources, there are now over 200 residents from the area held hostage. We're not just talking about a few rogue actors. We're talking about a pre-planned, meditated pattern of abuse that was intentionally undertaken, these abuses do amount to crimes against humanity. By identifying the perpetrators of these violations, we are trying to ensure that all individuals will be held to account. We are calling a foreign arms embargo against groups that were responsible for fundraising, planning, and commanding this operation. The individuals or countries that are supporting these groups are now on notice about the types of violations that they are committing and could be complicit in war crimes and crimes against humanity if they continue to support them. <laughs> Allah, 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 Allah,